Over the weekend, Peter B went to Kogi State in Adum Ogugu community precisely, dug a borehole and commissioned it. That gesture was greeted by a lot of persons and people celebrated Peter B for his kind gesture. In a rather shocking revelation, an indigenous in that community took to Twitter to thank P2B for coming to their village to dig a borehole for them. She said their village have not seen light for the past 20 years. Access to portable clean water is impossible. Before we go into what she said, I want us to read Mr. P2B tweet after he commissioned that borehole in Kogi State. Mr. P2B tweet in quotes, Commissioning of Boho in Adum Ogugu community. In furtherance to my commitment to contributing to a better society, I also commissioned a Boho project in Adum Ogugu community, Olamaboro local government area in Kogi State. This project aligned with our commitment to the sustainable development goals, emphasizing the importance of clean, potable water for the health of our communities. Upon learning about the water scarcity in Adum Ogugu community, I felt a strong urge to step in and provide support by donating this borehole. As I stated in my tweet yesterday, the challenge of water scarcity affects many Nigerian communities, with the World Bank estimating that 70 million Nigerians lack access to safe drinking water. Furthermore, diarrhea diseases claim the life of at least 70,000 children under 5 each year. It is crucial that we collectively address this issue to provide clean water to more Nigerians. By implementing projects like the one in Ogugu, we continue our mission to build a new Nigeria where every citizen has access to fundamental life amenities. It is possible, P.O. In reacting to Mr. Peter B's tweet, this ex-user took to her ex-handle to appreciate Mr. Peter B for coming to their aid. In her tweet, in quote, Peter B in my village, I've admired this man for so long, but today feels really, really special. A community completely ignored by the Kogi state government, even though we've produced some of the finest politicians, former state governor, former chief of staff. The community hasn't seen light for over 20 years. Access to clean water is a problem. No medical health care. This little gesture will bring smile to a lot of faces today. Thank you, Peter Ruby where she was reminded that outside Mr. Peter Robi, there is no finest politician in Nigeria. You cannot tell me that your community has produced the finest politicians and you don't have a portable drinking water. However, she quickly corrected herself. She said she was typing fast. That was the reason why she used that word, finest. There is no finest politician in Nigeria. The only finest politician we have is Mr. Peter Robi. He has shown it beyond reasonable doubt. Now, let us talk about what Mr. Peter Robi just did. P2B is a private citizen, he's not in government, he's a businessman. He's contesting to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, contested the election in 2023, and Einek at the judiciary said no, he was defeated, he lost the election. After the election, Mr. P2B has not gone by, he has not gone into hiding, just like you have seen Kwan Kwasu, just like you have seen Atiku Abubakar, they've all gone into hiding. Even the president has gone into hiding, he's not doing anything so far to show that he's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The only active politician currently in Nigeria is Mr. Pitobi. Since the election was concluded, Pitobi has thought the width and the breadth of this country touching the lives of Nigerians. Pitobi have seen suffering of Nigerians at first hand. And he said, I needed this power so I can make a difference. I can bring change to this country. But INEC and the judiciary denied him that opportunity to effect the needed change that Nigerians need. But that has not stopped him to do what he feels he can do as a private citizen. For the fact that Mr. Pitobi is digging boreholes for communities across the country is a slap to the faces of politicians in this country. Nigerian politicians, they are the most cruel, they are the most callous, they are the most soulless people I've ever seen or heard of. How can you deny your people basic amenities like water? basic thing like water that is a free gift of nature all you need to do is to use equipment to dig the water and the people will be happy with you with all the resources at your disposal how will you rule a state for eight years and you will not give something as simple as water to your community 
you call yourself a governor and at the end of your eight years tenure EFC is chasing you for looting the state treasury dry you use money that was meant to build water to dig borehole for your communities for your people to pay the school fees of your children up front what manner of wickedness is this from what that user is saying they have not seen light for 20 years light what a wicked generation of politicians we have in this country in the midst of all this i think i blame nigerians because they are the ones that are enabling this wickedness in the midst of our politicians because nigerian politicians they are so lucky they are so lucky to have people like nigerians that enable them to do what they are doing because how can you tell me that somebody you voted into power for four years after four years the person did not do anything and the person come back again and you still vote for that person why are you voting in someone into office? Nigerians should understand why they're voting people into office. When you vote someone into office, you are giving that person access to phone. That phone is meant for you. It's meant to change your life. It's meant to give you road. It's meant to give you water. It's meant to give you schools. It's meant to give you healthcare, good quality healthcare. It's meant to create job opportunities for you. But Nigerians don't even care about all these things. They don't hold their elected politicians accountable they don't ask them questions all they do during the election period this will will come and they will give them rice they will give them 2,000 naira they will give them spaghetti indomie and these same people that have been deprived of all the basic amenities we still go ahead to vote in these people why are you all behaving like captured slaves in your country this is so pathetic to watch Yaya Belorou for eight years and when he was leaving, he brought in his own political godson, his own political storage and put that person into office. And there was no resistance from Kogi people. Why can't you resist it? Look at what happened in Abia State. Appians rejected PDP. PDP has been in power for 24 years. They rejected PDP completely and they voted in someone they believe in. Why can't you reject what you don't like? 20 years, no light in Kogi State no access to portable drinking water it, you all need the help of a private citizen from another state to give you water this is so shameful i can't believe the way nigerians allow themselves to be used by these politicians i can't believe the way nigerians allow themselves to be captured are you guys voluntarily captured slaves don't you have right don't you have mouth can't you resist this intimidation can't you resist this cage that they've put you into can't you set yourself free nigerians you have the power to do this the power is in your pvc the power is in your vote can't you all go and vote and defend your vote even in the midst of intimidation can't you defend your vote even in the midst of the military attacking you can't you defend your vote even in the midst of the judiciary subverting your voices and your vote can't you defend your vote you must understand that nobody nobody can set you free from this cage from this slavery that you have perpetually allowed yourself to be put into nobody can set you free from it unless yourself if you don't want to remain slave forever then you must rise up and demand freedom for yourself freedom comes with a price you must pay it nigerians it's time for us to rise up because enough is enough we cannot continue like this we cannot allow few people to be in charge of the resources and they will use these resources to better their life the life of their family the life of their friends and crony while the people that the money is meant for are dying of hunger are going in in perpetual pain and suffering enough is enough you all should take a clue for what is happening in kenya kenyans they have given you all hard copy they have given you all hand out how to hold your politicians accountable how to bring your politicians to their news how to subject your politicians to your own whims and caprices look at what is happening in kenya the president is literally begging kenyans and is listening to their terms and demands for him to stay in office for him to remain in office one of the terms and demands they've given to him is to withdraw the bill he has done that he closed the office of the first lady closed the office of the of the, 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 the vice president's wife office and even sacked all his cabinet members why because kenyans were determined 
they were determined not to be in slavery forever. They were determined to take their destiny in their hands. Even when some of them were killed, even when the military, the police tried to stop them, they resisted every form of government intimidation and they went in for their right and they've gotten it. Nigerians, we have the population, we have the power. We should be able to do more than what the Kenyans are doing. But they've given us, they've given us the handout, they've shown us the way. We should lead it and liberate ourselves from this mental, tortured, captured slavery we have been put into for so long. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.